Hey everyone, it's Lisa from Primitive Gatherings, and today I want to demonstrate a project that uses our triangle papers. All right, let's take a look at the kit itself. So it's gonna come in this really cool tin, and it's packed full. We have the pattern, and the project is called Double Play, and it's gonna make two quilts. Also in the kit are the triangle papers that are specific to this project alone. Primitive Gatherings has a pre-cut that's six by 10. Again, this is exclusive to Primitive Gatherings. So this is the only place you're gonna see this pre-cut. And then the background. And did I mention that this is all flannel? So we're working with flannel today. So this project is called Double Play, and we named it that because it makes two quilts. It can be a baby quilt, or they could be a nice draped quilt for display, but it will make two quilts. This little one here, made with all the light leftover half square triangles, and then I use the dark triangles and a few of the lighter triangles in this project over here. I would love to explain how and why I starch. So the reason, the main couple reasons why I starch the fabric before I stitch it is because it allows the fabric to shrink before we actually stitch it. So it's not shrinking while you're piecing your blocks. So it's pre-shrunk because the starch will make it wet and then it dries and then it shrinks all at one time. And then also when we are piecing with it, the fabric is nice and crisp and smooth and it doesn't have a lot of frayed edges all over the place. So it's nice and clean and easy to stitch with. So let's get started. One of the first things I do is protect my ironing surface with an old towel. I just lay that over to protect my wool pressing mat. Get it nice and flat. And then here is my pre-cut. I'm going to lay them out right sides down onto my towel here. Nice and close together, but not overlapping. So I can get even starch on it. All right, so that's enough. Now the starch I like to use is any starch that's a heavier finish. And I do like the spray can better than the liquid starch. So all I'm gonna do is completely saturate each piece. I just continue doing back and forth. And the reason, one of the reasons why I do it on the back side is because I can tell where I missed easier than on the printed side. I forget all the reasons why I do things. Some, some of the stuff right now is just kind of automatic and I forget that I got to explain you know, why do I do it on the back side? So you're going to continue starching until you have all 42 pieces that are in your pre-cut all done. Now I purposely left of this one here like this because you see how the starch kind of puddles on top and then it's going to sink in so over here this one has sunk in nicely but when you might see a little spot here and there and you might have to go back over and spray some of the spots that you may have missed so it definitely shows up when you miss a spot all right continue till you have all of them done to be really efficient, what I do is when I have one layer already starch, I will take the next layer and lay it right on top of the previous layer 
That way all the starch soaks in and I don't waste time by stopping and starting and starching and stop unless you need a break then you could but I'll lay this all out like this and I will starch again and I will keep layering so I'll start starching again like this until I have all of these saturated and I keep layering until I'm done and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to hang them on the drying rack and let them dry naturally. Now it doesn't matter how you lay them on your drying rack. I'll even put them like that. You can stack them anyhow to get them all on. And then now you're just going to let them dry naturally. This project also contains a large piece of background fabric. So I'm going to demonstrate how to starch that as well. So you'll unfold it. And you can cut some of your like border fat pieces off. You could look on your pattern and figure out how big your borders need to be. And then maybe cut that hunk off and starch just that one. But with two projects, it's kind of hard. So I'm just going to starch this whole four yard piece. So I lay it on my towel, like so. And then I start starching on the edges. And I do like a perimeter. Just slow enough to make sure that I'm getting a nice amount of starch on this fabric. And then I will just go in and fill the whole thing in, starching every bit of it. And when you do a big piece like this, sometimes your fingers will get a little sore. So I have this little handle here that I have and this is in the hardware department in the paint department and it just clicks on it's for spray cans and now I can just grab this little trigger here instead of that little nozzle and you got to make sure it's pointing in the right direction I just sprayed a little bit on my arm no big deal right <laughs> all right so once and then look over good to make sure I have all the areas covered and now I will show you how I keep going. All right so now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up the yardage and I'm gonna lay it upon itself and I leave a little bit of the section that's already starched and then I just flatten it back out and then I continue to keep starching. And I will continue to do that throughout until I have this whole big piece starched, fully saturated, no dry spots on it. And then I'll also hang that on my drying rack. Or if you have an indoor clothesline, like I do in my studio at work, I, I also hang this big piece on there to dry. But you can fold it up and to dry. It doesn't have to be full flat out. It will dry nicely folded as well. All right, we're going to fast forward a little bit. We're gonna pretend that all of our fabric has dried. So what you're gonna do then is you're gonna grab a piece off, and this one is dry. I made sure I did this ahead of time. And you're going to, so it's kind of stiff. See that? It has body, it's really nice. So you're gonna lay these out then and give them all a quick press. And if you are unfamiliar with the iron I use, I like this Rowenta steam station. It has lots of holes in it, gives me lots of steam coverage. So I've pressed every one of those flat and I have pre-cut one piece for our demonstration here of our background so I can show you how to stitch the triangles. But what I like to do is once I have these, I like to pair them up. I give it a little bit of starch 
and I lay right sides together the 6x10 background that we're going to cut and each one of the pre-cuts and I give them a little press kind of like gluing them together with the starch. All right, now it's time to prep for stitching. Take your triangle paper and pull them out. We printed them on eight and a half by 11 sheets. We don't need this whole size. So if you look really close, you're going to see a dashed line on the outer perimeter. We're gonna trim there. So stack a few of them together and you can just eyeball it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Or if you want to be perfect, you can surely get your ruler out, lay it on, and trim. Whatever you prefer. Do that all four sides. Like so. Now these are ready to go on our paired pre-cut six by tens. So you're gonna prepare exactly every one of your 41 six by 10 pre-cuts with a dark on the bottom, the light background on top, the trimmed two inch triangle paper, and you may wanna put a pin in so it doesn't move on you. And then I'm gonna stitch this project with 2620 Orofil 50 weight thread. That's what I'm going to use for the project. Um, I will use that for all the half square triangles. When I start stitching the quilt together and I do the cream background when I sew the, um, the, the, the borders, I'm going to probably switch to a cream thread because I don't want to see the gray thread on the cream. So you could essentially use a cream thread as well. All right, time to stitch. Okay, it's time to stitch our triangles. One of the most important things that you cannot forget to do is to shorten your stitch length. So I normally stitch right here at a smidge below number two, and I'm gonna move that all the way to one. Now that's the most important thing you're gonna do, and this allows the triangle paper to perf off nicely. All right, so now I'm gonna stitch on these shadowed lines here that are all the way, it's a nice little path here drawn the directions that you can stitch it. Once you have one path, then just do the second path. You gotta be careful at the pivots. All right, I've completed this one and now I will finish all the other ones until I'm completely done. The next step in our process is going to be to trim with my rotary cutter on all of the solid lines, the perimeter, down the middle, and then between all the triangles as well. All right, find a ruler that's not super big, but kind of like the right size to what you're doing. And you could use a rotating mat as well if you have one. That makes it easier. Now all the solid lines. Now I make sure I see a little bit of the line and cut right on it. It's not easy cutting when you're sitting down as well. <laughs> I usually cut standing up. And you can turn your mat. You don't always have to. Now, 
because I'm gonna go in between now, I'm just gonna grab a little smaller ruler and do cutting them down the center apart. All right, the next step will be going to the iron. Now that we're done cutting, it's time to do the pressing. And yes, we don't take the paper off yet. We press them with the papers on. So I have them all stacked up here. I'm gonna turn my stack so the dark fabric is facing up. And then I can easily grab each one, push my finger in, and then run the iron over them. Now I'm not pushing hard with the iron. I'm just letting the weight of the iron roll onto the half square triangle and help me press it open. There's no muscle involved here. And I call this chain pressing when you just keep lining them up. And of course you're going to do this to every set that you have. And then now it's time to take the paper off. To take the paper off, I flip them over, grab a bunch of them in my hand, place my thumb right near the stitching. My opposite hand goes in and we pull this out right from the middle. You gotta kinda do it a little quicker than, I was trying to do it slow for the camera and that's really not the way you do it. And you'll continue to do that all the way till we're through them all. This is a good job that you can give your partner, your significant other to do while he's watching the baseball game. Nick has done this several times for me. And the more you do it, the easier it becomes. Now, these half square triangles are two inch finished, but at this point, they measure two and a half. So kind of take that in mind to learn that the finished size of your triangles is when it's sewn into the quilt not before it's sewn in. So these have the seam allowance on, so now they measure two and a half. And each one of them is a perfect two and a half inches. And they're gonna go nicely together. One of the last things we need to do before we can begin piecing the quilt is to clip the dog ears off. I like to do this, simply just sit and clip each one off. And sometimes I'll pick up a couple of them in my hand like this. One, two, three, and rotate them around. I've had a little practice at clipping triangle, half square triangles. Now this quilt, quilts, sorry, is made all of half square triangles. And we have lots of projects with primitive gatherings that use half square triangles and using the triangle paper makes the whole process much more simple, accurate and very easy to do. There's nothing hard about these two little quilts at all. So anybody from beginner to advanced quilter could make these very easily. If you are interested in purchasing a kit for double play, Kaylee will have all the links for the purchasing the kits, the patterns, the tools we might have used during this video. Everything you need will be in the description underneath this video. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure you subscribe, like, and hit that notification button so you'll be notified every time we post a new video. So thanks for joining us today and keep stitching.